Amen. Praise God. Well, anybody ready for the word today? You guys ready? <laughs> All right, well, rest on your feet. <laughs> Many of you have already seen the, uh, the promo for the sermon. Amen. I've had a couple of calls about that. I've seen uh, some emails and all of that, and uh, some are excited. I, I had one person say, hey, I'm coming to both services, so, so <laughs> I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But we're thankful for the Word of God and for the instruction that the Bible gives uh, in some of these areas. All right, well, grab your Bibles. Uh, just repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. I believe God's word. I'm a believer and not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hearer. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same after hearing God's word. I am being transformed by the ever-living uncompromising, never-changing, ever-powerful Word of God. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Everybody believing, everybody serving, and everybody giving. Amen. Let's pray. Hebrews chapter 13. Father, thank you. We sense your presence here today. Thank you. It's always Good to know that you are here in a tangible way. So we break up the fallow ground of our own hearts that we might receive the engrafted word of God that is able to save our souls. We need your help. So we open, open up our hearts to receive from you. Touch every person, every family, every life in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. One verse, Hebrews chapter 13, verse number four. The word of the Lord. Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. So far the text, you may be seated. <laughs> well, as I said in my promo, uh, this sermon is rated PG. Uh, it's not rated R, but it is rated PG, and so um, for those of you who have children in the room, just be aware, you know, I'm not going to cuss or nothing. <laughs> Don't even worry. I'm not going to be vulgar or anything like that today, but um, we are going to be dealing with what I would consider to be some adult content today. And you can tell by the subject of the lesson today, it is simply between the sheets. Between the sheets. Now, before we get started, uh, I just want to say, it's okay to say amen. 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 And we, we're, we're going to be just like um, Planet Fitness. This is a judgment-free zone. All right? And I can't see many of you. Some of you on the first few rows I can see. Um, but it gets dark out there with all these lights. And so uh, I won't know if you nudged your spouse or, you know, <laughs> if you're single, if you say amen real loud or anything like that. <laughs> it's all good, no judgment, um, but I believe that we do need the Word of God, especially in some of these areas. Amen. Well, you know what? I haven't done this in several years, but I got a, little, a quick little joke. It's very quick. Marriage is when a man and woman become as one. The trouble starts when they try to decide which one. <laughs> and I think all the married folks will say amen to that. Amen. 
It should be no big revelation that we are living in an over-sexualized culture. We have become inundated with sexual images, inferences, illicit content, and even legislation that is designed to govern under what circumstances society can engage in intimate encounters and still maintain legal compliance as well as moral acceptance. Let me say this loud for the people in the back. Christians don't take their cues about marriage and sex from American culture. God invented marriage and is the one who determines the parameters under which we are in compliance with his will. How is your love life? Are your relationship activities in agreement with what God says should be happening and with whom between the sheep? I need an organ today, yes. <laughs> well, we know Valentine's Day is tomorrow, and I really felt uh, to deal with love, if you will, and relationships from a biblical perspective. And I do want to say, uh, it's not in my notes, but I just feel this in my spirit, that I need to just say this message is for everybody. It's not going to be just for married folk. It's going to be uh, for those of you who are single as well. So those of you who are online, those of you maybe who are in here who, have, who do not have a spouse as of yet, hey, this one's for you too. And the Word of God has very specific guidelines about some of these areas, and I believe if we will receive them, uh, God will help us. We, we have to always remember, and again, I, I, I just sense this, that we need to understand this. Whatever God says in His Word is for our benefit. Oftentimes, you know, it's been said over the years, and maybe not overtly, but just kind of indirectly in its own way, that almost like God wants to destroy our fun. <laughs> well, you know, God's not a prude. He invented all this stuff, and so he's not that way. Whatever he has in his word, it is designed to bless us and to make our lives better. So again, I'll give a, another disclaimer just to make sure we all understand um, that this content is going to be uh, parental guidance uh, today. The Word of God from the beginning declares that biblical marriage is between one man and one woman. That's Bible, all right? Now, I'm, I'm going to add this, not to offend anybody, but it, it seems to be necessary nowadays because it seems that we in our country, perhaps around the world, but I don't live around the world, I live here, uh, it seems that we have gotten to be confused about what a man and a woman is. And so I think I will say it this way, uh, in the beginning, God defined marriage as uh, the uh, union, if you will, of one biological man and biological woman. And so I thought I would just clarify that. Jesus affirms this same truth as he taught on marriage as well. The Apostle Paul, he gives some practical wisdom. Everybody say practical wisdom. Practical wisdom and godly directives regarding singleness and marriage. And again, I want to be as frank and uh, concise with this teaching as I possibly can so that we can get revelation. We're living in a nation, we're living in a world now where even Christians basically, uh, by and large, disregard what God says. And I'm going to say this right up front, the devil is a liar. God's word has not changed just because it's 2022. So we gotta, we, we got to take another look at God's word. Uh, the, the wise man Solomon also asserts some realities of married life and how couples 
should relate to each other. <laughs> In Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he is answering a concern uh, that the Corinthian church had regarding marital relationships and purity and singleness. And we'll, we'll see this in the text. This is really our opening text for uh, this sermon. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, starting at verse 1, and this is going to be um, the majority of our lesson today is found right here. And so we're going to see what the Apostle Paul says under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Um, verse 1, now concerning the things which you wrote to me. Now here's, here's an interesting opening. He's basically saying, I am responding to your request for me to deal with some stuff. All right? And so that's why he is writing this. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. But I say this as a concession, not as a commandment. Let me stop there before I go on. What he's saying here is I'm not commanding you to be married. I'm not commanding you uh, to hook up, so to speak. This is by permission, all right? For I wish that all men were even as I myself. And the inference is he's single, but each one has his own gift from God, one in the manner and another in that. But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Yeah. All right, so the Apostle Paul is giving uh, these godly guidelines about marital relationships and sex and holiness, and it's all connected. All of these are connected, and I'll give my standard disclaimer one more time. Listen now. You've got to want this. You're preaching really good, Pastor Keith. You've got to want this. You've got to want to be right with God. You've got to want God to be pleased with your life and how you respond to these particular areas, really every area, quite frankly. So I want to give some clarity about areas, listen, the church often leaves to the world to define. Oftentimes, we don't even want to talk about this stuff. Well, deal with that, deal with that uh, in the Bible class that most of y'all ain't coming to. <laughs> no, we're going to deal with it on Sunday morning. Because the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It can deal with our issues. Verses 1 and 2, now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife and let each woman have her own husband. Listen, he's saying here, it is good to be single. Ooh, crickets up in here. Let me say that again. It's good to be single. Come on, single folks, help a brother. It is good to be single. It's good. Can you hear me? For the people in the back, it's good to be single. Listen now. Don't let the church or anyone else make you feel less than because you're not married. The devil is a liar. 
And oftentimes, I have to even be careful with this because oftentimes the, the activities that we have and how we address things is always to the married folk. And we have people who are single, listen, and happily single, single on purpose. And, and Paul is giving us um, an admonition here. He basically is saying, listen, I wish you would be uh, like I am. Paul was single at this point. Um, the inference is probably, and again, this is th through some extra study, that Paul probably was a widower because he was a part of the Sanhedrin council, and it was a requirement uh, to be married, to be a part of that group. So uh, the presumption is Paul probably was married, and then he may have lost his wife. We don't know that 100%, but that's the inference. So let me jump to verse 7, as Paul says, For I wish that all men were even as I myself, meaning he's single, but each one has his own gift from God, one in this manner and another in that. Being single, listen, being single affords the opportunity to concentrate on the things of God. You ain't got to worry about a spouse. You ain't got to worry about uh, coming to church and, and doing the activities and serving in the community and all of the things that God may prompt you to do during that season. You don't have to ask anybody. You don't have to check with anybody. So it's good to be single. You can pray as long as you want to in your house, as loud as you want to, anytime you feel like it. Come on. Those of you who are sing, uh, single, I want you to get a better picture of what it means to be a single Christian. You can be single and be powerful. You can be single and be anointed by God because you can literally give your entire life and attention to the things of God. But to avoid sexual immorality, Paul advises marriage. Of course, the New King James uses the term sexual immorality. I'm going to use the old school King James word, fornication. <laughs> to avoid fornication, the Apostle Paul is recommending marriage. Now, listen now. In this particular context, now I need you to hear what I'm saying here. In this particular context, it is not for love. It is not for purpose. We coming together to do what God called us to do, as we sometimes say, but simply so we don't commit fornication. So we don't commit sexual immorality. And I'm going to say it again. We got to want this. We've got, listen, we've got to stop excusing ourselves for our carnality and our flesh. Stop it. We got Christians that have almost lost all of their conviction because they've overridden the Holy Ghost every night. Here it is now. <laughs> If you don't have the gift, everybody say gift. Yeah. If you don't have the gift of singleness or celibacy, you need to get married. <laughs> you need to get married. And celibacy and singleness is a gift. And if you have it, you will be content to be single. You won't be looking for a spouse behind every tree. You won't come to the conference trying to find a husband or try to find a wife. That's not the reason to come to church. The reason why we come to church is to hear from God. Come on here. And to worship. Hey Amen. If you're coming for that, you are distracted. Come on now. But if you don't have that gift, you need to get married. Sexual purity is important enough to get married in order to avoid sinning in a sexual way. God is serious about this stuff. Once you get married, listen now, there are responsibilities that a husband and wife have to each other. So all the single folks, listen, you've got something to look forward to. If you do this thing right, God will help you. 
Now, I'm not the one, I'm, you know, I'm not giving specific pastoral counsel right now, but I don't believe that everybody in, in, in the earth has a soulmate. That's, that's a myth to me. It's, it's a myth. And, and I, I do believe that there are times in certain callings that certain men and women of God need to have a certain kind of spouse and need to be, there is a, a, a particular person that God may lead your way because of the assignment that you have. Because uh, you need to have, if you've got a certain kind of assignment, you have to have a certain kind of spouse. Come on here. Yeah, so he will do some of that, but I believe that's more rare than not. Uh, other than that, uh, if, if they meet the qualifications, if they're saved. Ooh, I met somebody, Pastor. But is he saved? Well, he go to church. Wrong answer. <laughs> got to do more than go to church. Come on here. The devil goes to church. Come on now. <laughs> no, no, no. We've got, we've got to get this thing right. So if you are single, God's got somebody for you. If you don't have um, the gift of singleness or the gift of celibacy, if you will, then you need to find somebody to marry. Are y'all still here? Some married couples in this room, listen, need to hear this word of God. And I'm getting ready to go there. So buckle up your seatbelts. Paul went there before me, so all right. Verse 3, starting at verse 3 through verse 5. Um, Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Now, let me deal with something um, right in the text. I didn't have this in my notes, but I thought I'd say this. Uh, I'm almost embarrassed to, to admit this, but oftentimes when we go on corporate fast and things like that, I don't even bring up the sexual part of it because some of y'all ain't going to do it. I've already had somebody that said something to me about it because I was contemplating. Do you know it's, it's fitting when you set aside a time of fasting and prayer that a wife and a husband should abstain? That's Bible. That's in the Word. Shoot, Pastor, I'm doing good not to eat. <laughs> I, I already said you got to want this. You, you, listen, you've got to want what fasting and prayer does. You know what a sacrifice is. I talked to you that last week. A sacrifice is giving up something of value now in, in favor of something that is more valuable later. So we don't just abstain. We don't just uh, push our plates back for the heck of it. We're looking for God to do something in our heart, do something in our spirit. Listen, do you understand the principle? If you can push back... A German chocolate cake, you might be able to contain yourself when tall, dark, and handsome comes by. It's connected. Mm-hmm. Husbands, whew, help us, God. Husbands are to satisfy their wives sexually. We got crickets again. Y'all listen to me now. Uh, I, I don't do a whole lot of counseling. Pastor Nate does most of that around here. Uh, but I, I've, got, I've done it in the past, and, and I've got sensitive to know how this works. This is an area that the devil messes with marriages. And I, I, I just got to say it really plain. Paul already said it. Listen now. Wives are to satisfy their husbands sexually. <laughs> Help a brother. Paul is clear that neither spouse has the right to withhold intimacy from the other partner. He goes in even further for those who are kind of slow. He says, each other's body does not belong to themselves but their spouse. So let me be clear. Let, let me be clear now. 
there is no godly reason to withhold sex from your spouse. Let me say this again. There is no godly reason to withhold. So listen, get that I got a headache stuff out of your spirit. Now, some of y'all's jaws are tight, so just loosen up. <laughs> loosen up. <laughs> Stop it. Now, I already said it. If you don't want to comply with what God wants and what God says, then all bets are off. But if you're trying to do what God says and you want God's blessing in your marriage, you need to hear what thus saith the Lord. Are y'all still here? There's no godly reason. Now, uh, the, the whole principle of mutual submission should say, uh, let's say I'll use myself as an example. I'm talking about me, but I'm talking about you, but I'm talking about me, all right? Uh, should say that if my wife is not feeling well or she's got something going on in her body or something's going on, I ought to have sense enough to know not to put that kind of pressure on her. But if I do, she got to give it up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Our opening text says this, Hebrews 13, 4, marriage is honorable among all and the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers God will judge. That ought to scare the bejesus out of us. You can't just do everything. The scripture says the marriage bed is undefiled. Listen now. So what happens between the sheets of a married couple is their business. <laughs> it's their business. Stay out of their bedroom. I'm talking to the pastors now. I'm talking to all the deep folks that think you got a word from God about what I ought to be doing with my wife. The devil and you are a liar. Some of this stuff that we come up with is giving place to the devil. Well, you shouldn't be doing all that. Who told you that? As long as we are in agreement. Are y'all still here? I'm talking about with a married couple. Stay out of their bedroom. Because we got some folks that got some hang-ups. Well, you don't do that in your bedroom. That's cool. Y'all can agree. You, you can do or not do. But get up out of mine. And don't make it all religious and deep. Well, I, I don't think, I don't think uh, Jesus would do that with his church. Listen, there's a whole bunch of stuff I don't think Jesus would do with his church. I can't see Jesus in missionary position in his, with his church either. Can y'all handle this? So you can't go by that. Well, I just can't imagine. Well, I'm just, I'm trying to free us because some of us got this religious demon on us. Now, I, I, please don't misunderstand me. We we are to remain in covenant with our spouse if they refuse to obey this. So it's never going to be an excuse to do your thing with somebody else just because your wife or your husband is not acting right. Did y'all hear that? Y'all hear that in the back? Y'all hear that online? I'm not giving you a license to commit adultery or fornication. All you single folks, well, you know, you just don't know. God made me like this. I got a high sex drive. That's why you need to use some self-control and the Holy Ghost. That's why. But Paul's teaching here, his instructions here, as he's led by the Holy Spirit, is just practical wisdom. Don't be simple. Undefiled means not made corrupt, impure, or unclean. So I take that to mean the marriage bed is clean and pure whatever they do. <laughs> I 
if Reba and I are in agreement, stay up out of there. And we ain't going to tell you no how. But I, I'm talking mostly to a lot of this bad teaching that we have over the pulpit and, and, and in counseling sessions. Listen, and, and please don't get me wrong, but I'm telling you, uh, hopefully, hopefully nobody's got this name in here. I always use this term. Listen, Susie going to do whatever married husband want her to do. Ooh, got quiet then, boy. Yeah, yeah, and Billy Bob, he'll get freaky, even if you won't. Are y'all still here? I'm talking reality. Again, that's not the criteria on whether or not you should be tempted among uh, measure and, and do something you have no business. I'm just saying, when we don't do what we need to be doing, listen, we give place to the devil. Do not deprive one another. Satan will have a door of opportunity if we do not follow these instructions. Fasting is the only time to abstain, and that's only with agreement for a season. Let me help some of you. Some of you men out there that are deep, want to be all holy and all that. We all do. I get it. But don't tell your wife no because you're seeking the Lord. No, she's got to agree. Well, honey, I'm, I'm really seeking the Lord right now. Well, I am too, but uh, come on with it. <laughs> and, you know, and you know what you need to do if you're going to follow the instruction of the Word of God? You need to come on with it. <laughs> woo I think I'm going to get the tape. <laughs> Listen now. If you are fasting and you guys are in agreement... That's all good. Other than that, help a brother out, Marvin Gaye. Let's get it on. Yeah. Come on now. Listen, this is where we live. Paul says in verses 8 and 9, But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Listen now, if you don't have this gift, I've mentioned several times, this gift of singleness that Paul is talking about, uh, you need to get married. Marriage is a covenant. It's a decision. We ought to know by now it's not uh, a successful marriage. It's not based uh, on how much you love them when you get ready to get married. It's a commitment. It's your will to love them and cherish them and be selfless with them. Don't be stupid. These commands are in God's word to warn us against foolishness. Come on, music team, I'm almost done. And here's the hard thing right here. I'm going to make this statement. Here's the hard thing. Don't presume on your spouse's spirituality, self-control, or devotion to you. Don't be presumptuous about that. I love Jesus. I love him. I worship him. He's my savior. He's my master. He's my king. But there are times that I'm tempted at a certain level that being married is my way of escape. Hey, Pastor Shanak, you carnal to me. Nope, I'm not carnal. This is the reality. Now let's, let's get our heads out of the clouds and come on down where Paul is talking here. He's saying, listen, your body does not belong to you. That means you are to sacrifice, if that's what it is, in order to meet the needs of your spouse. 
and vice versa. So, it's not about you. So it ought to be something going on between the sheets besides sleeping. Yeah, I've thought about this. I've never done it. But um, some of the couples that we have in our church, I don't know anything personally per se. I just know that the averages, and I've done a lot of research about this kind of stuff. Uh, you would be surprised. Maybe you wouldn't be surprised. You'd be su surprised how many marriages don't have sex in them. Serving God, worshiping God, hikamashanda'ing, <laughs> speaking in tongues, all of that stuff. But when they go home, a whole different life. This is what this teaching is really about. That we need to take the word of God seriously and don't be presumptuous that your man or your woman is so saved that they can't uh, run away with the secretary. Ooh, I know, I know y'all don't like me now. It's all right. I'm ready for y'all. That's why we see this stuff happening. And the word of God comes to try to help us if we will listen to avert these temptations. Paul said it, listen, come back together so that Satan doesn't tempt you because of your lack of self-control. And we all have those days. I'm going to say it for the people in the back. We all have those days. We got to ask God, God help me. I know, I know, y'all too deep. I'm talking about me, but I'm talking about you. <laughs> this, is the, this is where we live. This is how we see families get destroyed. This is where we see ministers of the gospel fall. And, and see, we, we, we look from the outside and we say things like, oh, she don't even look as good as his wife. Well, his wife might not be giving it up. Ooh, it got quiet then too, didn't it? Hmm. I'm just telling you where we live. That's not an excuse for sin, ever. But it is a reason. And so sometimes we need to get revelation and we need to wake up. The light has to come on in our heart. And don't be presumptuous. Come on now. I might not be that saved. I hope y'all understand what I'm trying to get across to you. Yes, sir. Are y'all tracking with me? I am good and saved, but I'm just saying. You know, if J-Lo moved to Muncie, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> I want to kick old Ben out of the way. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying, don't you? You, you getting it? Right. No, no, no. I, I love my wife. Yes. But listen, we, we've got, this stuff is foolishness. We, we, we counsel people about these same things. It's like, what's going on, man? Shoot, I'm tired. Okay. And when he don't come home, we don't want to hear it. It's not an excuse. But we've got to do the Bible. Listen, let, let, me, let me do it. I'm almost done. Uh, let, me, let me say this. Why do you think they wrote to Paul about this stuff? He's, right in verse 1, he said, uh, uh, concerning the things that you wrote to me about, <laughs> that means somebody's having a problem. And Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is trying to help us out. Let's listen to Solomon. <laughs> Proverbs 5, let your wife be a fountain of blessing for you. Ah, hallelujah. <laughs> Rejoice in the wife of your youth. She is a loving deer, a graceful doe. <laughs> let her breasts satisfy you always. 
May you always be captivated, captivated by her love. So if you're captivated by your spouse's love, you won't be tricked into going into the harlot. So we, we, we got we to gotta get our heads out of the clouds and come on down. Come on down to where we live. All, listen, all of these benefits are for a husband and a wife. So all of you single people, you can look forward to it. God's got somebody for you. Yeah. And listen, don't be practicing. Hey, glory to God. All right, stand up on your feet. I'm done. Anything other than in the marriage, in the covenant, is out of God's will. Now, just because God is gracious and he doesn't kill you when you land in somebody else's bed does not mean that he's okay with that. Foolishness. So let's get it together. Married people, your assignment is do it till you're satisfied. Woo. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you're weird. You know, there's always an inside joke that, that guys uh, want sex more than uh, their spouse. That ain't necessarily true. <laughs> Can I get a witness up in here? <laughs> Come on here. Don't be, <laughs> don't be foolish. Now see, we're laughing. And we should laugh. I'm doing this on purpose to be comical. All of that is good. But I'm telling you, there's tragedy in the making if you don't obey what God said here. And God wants to help us. So I want to pray. And you know what? The whole rationale for this teaching is so that we can be in the will of God. So that we can be Christian. So that we can show forth his praise. There are too many divorces. Too many affairs. Too much fornication going on, whole bunch of ungodly stuff. One of the things that God says in the New Testament, almost in terms of principle, more than almost anything else, is to flee sexual immorality. Why is he saying that? Because we ain't fleeing. We got to get this thing together. So let's pray together. Father, <laughs> you know we need help with this in every area. We need revelation. Help us to have a Holy Ghost resolve to get this thing right. Because when it's right, it is right. There is freedom. And so we give you praise. We thank you, God, for this congregation and those that are watching online. Help us to comply with what your word has already said. It's not even emotional. It's not based upon our feelings. Sometimes we don't feel like it. That's not in the text. We got to do what we got to do. So I give you praise. I thank you for this congregation. I thank you for these families that are watching. I thank you for the single people who are literally trying to abstain from sin. We, we commend them in Jesus' name. Even within the church. It's so pervasive that just let live and live and do your thing. Listen, the devil is a lie. So help us, God, to exercise self-control. We want to claim the power of the Holy Ghost. Help us to use it in this area to do what you've called us to do. We ask that you bless marriages. Bless these unions. Help them to come together as one. We give you the praise. We thank you in advance. We thank you that you've already pronounced the blessing upon us, that we're blessed coming in, blessed going out, everything in our basket, in our store, in our financial arena is blessed. Our children are blessed to a thousand generations. Our health springs forth speedily, and whatever our hands touch, it prospers in Jesus' name. So we give you praise as we leave here. We leave here free, and whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So we give you praise. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Our altars are open.